The Christmas season is a time when the juxtaposition of the sacred and secular feels sometimes blatantly opposed and sometimes quite blurred. The word sacred points to something dedicated as holy and set apart. This year, you are invited to a spiritual journey of seeing all things pregnant with the holy. What could our experience of Advent and Christmas seasons be like if we lived it, imagining that everything is reflecting the sacred? This year, as we approach Christmas, what if we saw the presence of the holy in all that has been, is, and always will be, right here, reflected in and through everything and everyone around us? I want to invite us to spend some quiet time at the beginning of every one of our Advent and Christmas worship experiences to soften our focus on life, to blur the hard edges of our lives, to see the whole picture with our hearts, to train our hearts to love as God loves with an all-encompassing compassion, to look at life through the reflections of the sacred. I invite you to get comfortable where you are sitting. I invite you to open your hands upward on your lap. Close your eyes if you are comfortable doing so and take a deep intentional breath in and out. If it is difficult to get your mind to quiet down, if you are making shopping lists in there, it's okay. Don't judge it. Just take another breath. That's it. Take time to settle in. Bring to your mind's eye, to your memory and imagination, a time of day that you love. Is there a moment in your day where you get to catch a breath in some time alone? Perhaps it is in cooking in your kitchen or watering plants or some other ordinary moment. As you see this scene, put it in slow motion. Now imagine particles of light showering slowly upon it. Let this reflection of light be an anointing of hope for seeing more and more of life through the lens of the sacred. And now as the choir comes to share our new threshold song, continue to breathe, listen, and see with your heart.
take one more deep breath and open your eyes slowly. As you are ready, I invite you to stand in body and spirit as we invite the Jinx family to come and light the Advent wreath, the candle of hope. Repeat after me. We pray for hope this day. We pray for hope this day. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see each moment. We open to see each moment. As a gift of holy presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. This is the gift of the Christ mystery. Lighting the way to hope. Lighting the way to hope. Let us pray. Living God, Christ mystery, spirit of hope, we give you thanks for this holy moment together. As we take in the hope you offer, may we be a reflection of your light, expanding the sacred time of right now into the sacred time of always and for all time. Amen. Please remain standing in body or spirit as we sing our opening hymn of hope, Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus, found in your hymnals on page 196 or lyrics on the monitors. Come, Thou Long-Expected Jesus, number 196. <laughs>
and we invite anyone who wants to come up for a messy Advent moment to come for a messy Advent moment. Brilliance more visible, as in a prism. As we encounter this message today, we see the world in our own lives and loved ones in a different light, one that invites us to know more deeply the sacred nature of all things. We invite the children, or anyone who considers themselves a child of God, to come forward. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to share something with you. So I started babysitting half of the children of my hometown when I was 12, which was like a whole lot of years ago. And then I worked as a nanny when I was in high school. I started teaching children's Sunday school class when I was 14. I worked at a daycare out of, when I got out of high school. Then I worked as a teacher. Now I do what I do. So do you think that I know a thing or two about children? Probably, right? I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. And there's one thing I know without a doubt, there is nobody with more hope than a child at Christmas time. I also know that if you are a teacher this time of year, the weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas break, you have my prayers. <laughs> because there is nobody filled with more hope and excitement than a child at Christmas time. Right? Right, Miss Candace? Uh huh. But I was thinking about that hymn that we just sang. Were you kind of listening to the words? Come thou long expected Jesus. James, do you want to take a guess what year that song might have been written? Uh, no guesses? Grace, do you have a guess? Uh, 19, 1990. 1990. That would be a long, really long time ago, wouldn't it? Wow. 1970. 1970, oh my goodness, so, oh, what an old song. What if I told you that that hymn was written by Charles Wesley in 1744? Wow, can you count back that far? I mean, that's a lot older than 1990, <laughs> which, by the way, is when I was babysitting and working with children, so... It's back in the 1700s. Can you believe that? And that tells me that people have been hoping for Jesus and putting their hope in God probably way before 1744, don't you think? Isn't that amazing to think? The first time they believed in Jesus was when he was 10 years old. You're really close to right, James. We, that might have to be a Sunday school lesson in a couple weeks. You're really close to right. Actually, people believed in Jesus the day he was born, didn't they? Who came to see him when he was born? Everyone. Everybody came. Yeah, the shepherds came. The wise men came later. They believed in him when he was born because he was the long-awaited son of God. People put their hope in God, and we put our hope in Jesus. And that's what the first Sunday of Advent is all about. We lit the hope candle because we have hope in the coming, in the coming season. Isn't that neat? Let's say a really quick prayer. Dear God, thank you for filling us with hope. As we wait for the coming of Jesus, this Advent season. Amen. The busyness of the holiday season can overrun the sense of the sacred. The irony is that setting apart time for connection with the sacred gets pushed aside 
in order to create the, crap, the trappings of what is supposed to be the season of celebrating the presence of the holy. We will begin our Advent journey toward Christmas by emphasizing the gift of being awake to the now, the gift of sacred time with God, with each other, and with those in need of hope. We will start this time by singing a new Alleluia to the tune of Sing Me Now of Christmas. Joe will sing it one time and then you will join in. Again, the very difficult words are Alleluia. Our first reading comes from the letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. Make sure that you don't get so absorbed and exhausted in taking care of all your day-by-day obligations that you lose track of the time and doze off, oblivious to God. The night is about over. Dawn is about to break. Be up and awake to what God is doing. God is putting the finishing touches on the salvation work he began when we first believed. We can't afford to waste a minute, must not squander these precious daylight hours in frivolity and indulgence, in sleeping around in dissipation, in bickering and grabbing everything in sight. Get out of bed and get dressed. Don't loiter and linger, waiting until the very last minute. Dress yourselves in Christ and be up and about. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. No one knows that day and hour, not the angels of heaven, nor even the only begotten, only Abba God. The coming of the promised one will be just like Noah's time, In the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, having relationships and getting married right up to the day Noah entered the ark. They were totally unconcerned until the flood came and destroyed them. So it will be at the coming of the promised one. Two people will be out in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two people will be grinding meal, one will be taken and one will be left. Therefore, be vigilant. For you don't know the day your Savior is coming. Be sure of this. If the owner of the house had known when the thief was coming, the owner would have kept a watchful eye and not allowed the house to be broken into. You must be prepared in the same way. The promised one is coming at the time you least expect. may be seated. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen.
if it hadn't been a rainy, gloomy day, I might have brought my grandmother's watch to share with you. It's a pendant watch with a beautiful face, and I never knew my grandmother to be without it. She received it, I believe, on her 16th birthday. And it still keeps time today. I have it, but the weather was just too gloomy and rainy and damp to risk bringing it out. But when I take it out of the box that it's kept in and I wind it up, and the second hand begins, and the minute hand begins. It is hard to believe that this watch is well over 120 years old. I'm glad my sisters can't be watching right now because I'm sure I messed up on the age of my grandmother. I believe she was born in 1888 or something like that which isn't as old as come thou long expected Jesus, but almost. That watch kept time over the birth of her children, over her life on the farm, over the days of the Spanish flu, of the depression, of the World War over the times when they moved off the farm in, into town and my grandfather no longer had to get up at the crack of dawn to milk the cows. That watch kept time as her children raised children and some of them went off to war during Vietnam. That watch kept time as she struggled with the death of my grandfather and then the death of my mother, as great-grandchildren were born. And that watch continues to take time. But you have to wind it. You know, we're spoiled. You know, the watch I wear now says, oh, time to charge it. I charge it. Or we plug our clocks in. Some of us have clocks that need to be wound with a key or the chains moved. But for the most part, we are in a society where we don't have to take time to focus on time to make sure that the timekeeper is continuing to keep time. Yeah, don't ask me to say that one again. <laughs> We're also in a society where instead of having clock faces, where we get an idea of time, we have numbers that say 10.07, and I've taken five flights of stairs today. Today's scripture challenges us to stay focused on time, not just the clock face time, but sacred time. Time when we are aware of the inbreaking of God into our world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and at some point in the first couple of years, yes, the shepherds came and the cows mooed and the sheep bawled. The wise ones traveled from afar, not a fire, but afar. All of that happened. And that is the birth that we anticipate during Advent. That birth of Jesus among us. When God took on human form, But God has always been with us. And the power and the light and the energy that is that Christ 
moment when Jesus no longer walks as a human, but, but once again is one with God, that moment has always been with us. It has been with us in those moments, in those times, when as the floodwaters were rising, Noah's family was saved. That energy, that oneness with humankind was with us. As Moses led the children of Israel out of captivity to the promised land, it was with us when David, in all of his humanness, sang psalms of joy and praise, lament and wonder. That moment was with us when the prophets proclaimed that the Christ would be with us. That moment was with us as scientists have determined that light and darkness are one and the same, that throughout light there are speckles of darkness and that throughout the darkness there are speckles of light. How do we reflect sacred moments and sacred times when we know that God is with us, that God has broken into human history. The sanctuary looks a bit different this year. It almost looks as if we've skipped Advent and gone to Christmas Eve because there isn't a lot of the purple, and we've decorated with crystal and white. That's intentional not because we are skipping Advent, but because we are looking at the way in which light is reflected and refracted, how it sparkles, and how the beauty of the tree casts all different kinds of rainbow colors to remind us that light shimmers in different ways. How does the light of Christ shimmer in you? How do you see the light of Christ in all that you do? And how do you share that light with the world? The prophets of old knew throughout the writings of Jeremiah, Isaiah, in Ezekiel, in Micah, in Zephaniah, in Joel, even in Jonah, the impact of God in the world was made known. For the choir come and remind us of the song of the prophet.
During this time in worship, we celebrate the things we do as a congregation, our missional outreach, our offering, and our prayers. All of these are a response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not only do we thank God and all of you for the generosity of this congregation, we also invite you to pray for our congregation's mission and ministry. Please remember to look at the expanded stewardship sharing in your insert for more complete announcements, and then take those home as you pray for the ministry of the church during the week. This list is also emailed weekly. This year we are again collecting new unwrapped toys to help brighten the Christmas of children in our community. We will be taking part in the Toys for Tots drive this year. The last pickup will be on December 19th, so toys will need to be returned to the church by December 18th, and I can't tell you how many times we have already emptied the bin to put more gifts in. And speaking of the children in our community, I have here a note uh, that says, uh, please announce that there are two cards on the clothes line out on the board in the gathering room. So for another way uh, that you can support the children of, of our community, um, we do have two cards located on the clothes line out in the gathering room. Also in the gathering room, we have poinsettia forms. If you would like to make a donation for them, fill one out along with your donation. We are accepting donations all through the month of December. December's Messy Church is collecting items to pack cold weather care packages for soup kitchen guests. Please see your insert for needed items. They need to be received by November 30th. If you have not come to a Messy Church gathering, this would be a great one to come. It's Friday, December 2nd at 6 o'clock, at 6 o'clock and come see what we do and help get these packages ready to give to our guests. Our Advent study, Reflecting on the Sacred. Pastor Nancy will be using three books for this study, The Universal Christ by Richard Rohr, Everything is Sacred, 40 Practices and Reflections on the Universal Christ, and Preparing for Christmas, Daily Meditations for Advent, also by Rohr. Feel free to purchase one or all of these books so, Beverly, what is happening on December 11th at 3 o'clock and at 6 p.m.? Mm. The Cookie Walk is December 10th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The price is a mere $8 a pound for homemade cookies, and you can't beat it. And I suspect that the United Women in Faith could use help with, with donations of cookies. So talk to any of our United Women in Faith individuals if you have cookies to donate. Come to a casual worship on Christmas Eve Eve. Join us at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary on Friday, December 23rd. Again, not Christmas Eve, but Christmas Eve Eve. And then on Christmas Eve, join us on December 24th at 9 p.m. in the sanctuary for the service of lessons and carols, culminating in a candlelight service. And much to the dismay and distress of some individuals in the sanctuary, there is a Christmas Day worship service. It is 
a relaxed service of carol singing, storytelling, and blessing. Wear comfy clothes, even decent pajamas if you like, and you may bring your favorite gift to be blessed. Our response to the gospel is in our prayers, our actions, and our offerings. Refer to the bulletin to see the many ways you may make your financial offering, including placing it in the box toward the back of the sanctuary. You may use your gift of time by serving on any of our ministry teams. We are wells of the sacred. God's presence is poured into creation in a never-ending flow of love. We enter a time of prayer that invites us to be refilled in ways that can help us pour out our love throughout the week. As we must do in this mo all we must do in this moment is open our hearts to the Holy One. As we pre prepare to share our joys, concerns, and requests with one another, I invite you to join in song as we sing Emmanuel. Joe will sing it one time through and then you will join in. The words will be on the screen. Do we have joys, concerns, prayers, celebrations to share this day? Um, I'm asking for prayers for a very good friend of mine named Deb. She has seen her husband uh, have Parkinson's and suffer, and now she's been diagnosed with stage four cancer. And nobody's gonna be able to take her take care of him, they're going to have to find somebody to take care of the both of them. I have a family member on Dan's side of the family who um, just this past week got diagnosed with uh, lung cancer. They're not sure if it's stage three or stage four. Um, prayers for her, please. I would like to thank all the people <clears throat> that decorated the church. You've done a wonderful job, and it's beautiful. Thank you. I want to wish a happy birthday to Cindy and to Dottie today. Yes. like to ask for prayers for all those who have to deal with the horrible violence that's been going on with um, the mass shootings and um, people who have had a lot of accidents and things like that recently. I had to witness one last week where a gentleman died and it, there are a lot of people who are in, in pain and I want to pray for them. Thank you. 
I want to thank everybody who continues to pray for my dad. Um, I've lost count. Today is day, I think, 96 of him being at the University of Chicago Hospital. Um, but fingers crossed, he goes into surgery tomorrow for his skin graft and the closing of his wound. And that is a praise and wonderful. He's, he, the, his, he's healing beautifully. And as soon as that he heals from that, he can have real physical therapy and finally get out of bed, which is all he wants. So just prayers that surgery happens on schedule tomorrow and that there are no further complications. We would really appreciate the continued prayers. I was fortunate to spend uh, Thanksgiving down in Georgia with my beloved sister and brother-in-law and nephew Silas, who is one now, um, and I would just like to offer praise to God for my nephew Silas and that both of my twin nieces um, are doing well. It is absolutely a blessing if you have any extra prayers. My sister is terribly uncomfortable and incredibly cranky, and she's still got like three months to go. <laughs> so pray for her and really pray for her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have anything else? Let us pray. May your light shine, O oh God, and may we reflect your light. May you be reflected in nightclubs and at sites of mass shootings where your presence and your comfort is made known. Your light is reflected, O oh God, in the joy of families who gathered at Thanksgiving, being together, even in the crankiness of community. Your light is reflected, O oh God, when your children speak forth with love, with justice, and with hope. It is your light, your sacred time, that brings hope to your world. May we see it, may we feel it, may we reflect it. You have heard these prayer requests. You know the needs. You were present with each of these individuals before we even began to pray. We especially pray for Mary Ann and Jim and their family as they continue to await clarity. All of this we pray in Jesus' name who taught us and continues to teach us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before I can announce it, doxology is to the melody of what child is this? I don't know what page it is, Beth. So y'all may want to take a look and see how it fits to those words. This is always what happens when we start a new worship series after a holiday weekend.
and Amy. We too often think that something sacred is far away and not available to us. This Advent season, we are reframing the way we recognize the sacred reflected all around and through us. As we prepare to move into the world, we begin to reframe our view of the world and our circumstances, illuminating new ways of being the Christ, anointed one, tangibly present. Christ indeed means the anointed one. Anointing with oil has long been a sacred sign of holiness. The Christ is reflected in and through all things, including sacred time. This week you are invited, when you re return home, you are invited to take a bit of oil or lotion and touch it to your forehead or the back of your hand, one time each day, when you set aside some sacred time for awe and wonder. Perhaps it will be each morning as you get ready and you stop for a moment to say a prayer of gratitude. Perhaps it will be during a time of devotional reading or journaling. Perhaps it will be in your car before you head home for your commute from work. Or perhaps you will do this with your family just before bedtime. The way you set aside time is up to you. Repeating the same time frame each day is helpful to establish a rhythm. The anointing is a physical way to help us remember that we are one with Christ, the anointed, and with each other and all of creation. Our closing hymn can be found in your hymnals number 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, or lyrics on the monitors. Number 206, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
When you see lights twinkle, when you catch a reflection in a mirror, when you notice the sunlight dancing on a surface or a nightlight glowing in the darkness, let these be signs that the Christ light is revealed again and again in and through this world. It's okay, we're leaving the Advent light lit. Know that your brilliant presence is pouring more hope into a weary world. God loved us by becoming us. This means you are already reflecting the sacred in the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Spirit of Hope. Amen. Amen.